Now, I'm not sure about a lot of you, but I, I tend to like things. Items? They're pretty cool. What's better is if you can get said items monthly from under the radar brands, yet still being of high quality. If that's what you're looking for, then you should be checking out my sponsor, Bespoke Post. Bespoke Post is free to join and allows you to get new items from small businesses every single month. Many of said businesses being right here in the US. Each box is around $70 worth of value and yet you pay a fraction of that and you only need to keep what you like. You'll get a box assigned to you each month based on a quiz you take and you can either keep it, swap it for a different box you prefer, or send it back with no charge to you. As you see behind me, I got multiple boxes from Bespoke, each of them having their own unique and interesting items that all follow a different kind of category that I chose personally. And you can have that exact same personalized style right here on the website where you fill out your questionnaire, you find out what stuff is more for you compared to other things, and then they can curate your box. The ones they chose for me, I really like. They have a lot of different types of items. Not only that, but there is a decent amount of variation between all of them and i mean they're very practical you know it's always nice when the thing you buy for yourself is not just a sit on the shelf type thing but like when you get it it has use so if any of this seems interesting to you you can go ahead and check them out down in the description at bespokepost.com slash bricky 20 to get 20 percent off your first order bricky 20 20 percent off down there in the description you'd said code bricky 20 bespokepost.com slash bricky 20 did you hear bricky 20 did you hear it hear it bring 20 and thank you very much to bespoke post for sponsoring this video and let's talk about the manliest game ever made hey folks Dr. Bricky here with Renaissance Periodization. Today, we're discussing whether me making my way to your address with a loaded handgun can increase hypertrophy and muscle stimulus. We're aiming for about mm, three reps in reserve and one cap in your ass. Or we can talk about Peggle. I think we're talking about Peggle. I have said many a times that 2007 was the golden year for video games. And it's only really rivaled by 2007. Now, nostalgia factor comes into play here, absolutely, but you know, this is my video, so screw you. Nostalgia aside, it does still contain one of the most undisputed greatest video games of all time, Peggle. Now, I don't know if you had cyber cafes where you lived, but for me, there was this place in Mission Viejo, California, in a center known as the Kaleidoscope Center. It kind of sucks, but whatever. It was called Howie's Game Shack. It was an enormous room filled with a ton of high-end gaming PCs, and the entire walls were littered with giant TVs, gaming chairs, and consoles of your choice. That was where I, as a 14-year-old brick, spent many a weekend. There, I discovered my love for Command & Conquer 3. It's also where I discovered discovered League of Legends. I did many Halo 3 tournaments, many World of Warcraft grinding sessions. And when I got bored or I was waiting for everyone else to finish up a game, I would play Peggle. Peggle is what made me the man I am today. It's a game where boys become men, a coming of age requirement. While playing Hearts of Iron 4 turned you into a femme boy, Peggle turned me into a fee man. Arnold Schwarzenegger was not pumping iron, he was pegging. I'm coming day and night. So what is this testosterone waterfall of a game? what you would call a puzzle game. Wikipedia calls it a casual puzzle game, which is obviously written by an Overwatch defender because casual is the last word I would use to describe Peggle. This iron wield puzzle game requires firing balls from the aptly named Ball Launcher to hit pegs on the way down. You get a set number of balls in your Ball Launcher and your goal is to hit every single orange peg on your way down in order to win. Or, no in order to survive. There are also various other pegs along the way. There are blue pegs that are mainly meant to get in your way or score your points. There are purple pegs that are big points boosts and multiply the amount of points you get for that ball run. And there are green pegs that allow you to get a special powerful ability based on your peggle master. And there's also a roaming bucket on the bottom of the screen where if your ball falls in said bucket, you get a free ball. You can also get a free ball if you get enough points in a single shot, helped, of course, by said purple peg. There are 55 total missions in the adventure mode of Peggle, aptly named The Pegger's Journey, and there are 10 pegging masters. Oh, I hate getting pegged by a tall vampire queen. Oh! 
Each Peggy Master has five levels to their name, as well as a special ability between them. And these Peggle Masters are Bjorn Unicorn, Jimmy Lightning, Cat Tut, Splork Sporkin, Cloud Lobster, Renfield Pumpkin, Tula Sunflower, Warren Rabbit, Lord Cinderbottom, and Master Who. Hold it! Ricky, if there are only 10 masters and five to each, then how are there 55 levels instead of 50? And to that, I respond with, how did you know I was in your house? The last five levels there are to prove your Peggle mastery. You are able to choose any of the Peggle masters and use their ability for the five gruesome, grueling shrimp grits levels, which despite the extreme nutsack hair you have undoubtedly developed by playing this game, eh, not all abilities are created equal. Hype music, uh, drum roll, give, give me give me some explosions, throw some jets in there, I don't, I, don't, I don't care what you do. Introducing the 10 Peggle Masters tier list, where we rank all 10 of the special abilities per Peggle and Peggle Master abilities in the four columns. Excessive estrogen, the ball dropping, increasing the load and the pegger's delight. Starting with Bjorn Unicorn, you have Guided Shot. This lets you aim it a little bit better. Fucking trash in estrogen it goes. Jimmy Lightning hits you with the multi ball. So when you hit that green peg, Two balls. Solid choice. I'd say increasing the load level here. Not only does it help you clear out more of the pegs, but it also has the possibility of either of them landing in the bucket, which is a huge boon if you're able to get those extra free balls. Cat Tut has the pyramid. This makes the ball bucket much wider. This is ball dropping level here. It's really fucking good when it wants to be done, but it is also quite situational. Sometimes it just doesn't come into play. Splork Splorkin has space blast. This is a solid load increase. It just straight booms out everything around it. Not only helping with points, but also increasing the amount of overall pegs removed to allow you to get to the hard to reach ones a little bit better, or it might just hit those hard to reach oranges ones anyway. Maybe a little RNG dependent, but a good explosion has never failed me. Cloud Lobster has flippers. What did you say, punk? I'm talking like, you know, pinball style flippers here. This is a clear load increase as well. If you have the right map for it, they just crush. They are so good. The balls will go up and down and up and down and up and down. And eventually you might just get enough points to rack up a whole extra ball for your ball launcher. But it's only in the right map. Honestly, depending on the map, he might be in Pegger's Delight, but there's only one problem. He's French. Renfield Pumpkin has Spooky Ball. When the ball falls through the screen, it actually reappears to the top of the screen and hits its way back down. Renfield is our first Pegger's Delight. Spooky Ball is busted when it can be used properly. And the skill ceiling in using it is very high. I mean, this is already a high skill ceiling game, but this is like, we're talking the top StarCraft pros. It can also land in the bucket on the second way down, or because it's going so far so fast, you just rack up enough points to get an extra ball anyway. Good positioning, intelligent use, Halloween themed spooky skeletons. Yeah, yeah, this is a pegger's delight. Tula Sunflower has flower power where they light up 20% of the remaining oranges on the screen. This is mm, ball dropping overall. The problem is that it doesn't destroy all the other pegs surrounding the area. And maybe you'll get to some hard to reach ones, sure. But without the removal of something like a space blast to let you get in those nooks and crannies, all it does is kind of pick and remove. And you know, how am I supposed to get in that little area if you all use pick and remove? It's photosynthesis. Shit. Warren Rabbit has Lucky Spin. This gives you a spin on four separate upgrades, including other Master's abilities and some of his own. Listen, Warren goes in ball dropping because he's finicky and real men don't gamble. However, Magic Hat. Magic Hat goes in Pegger's Delight. Magic Hat. Magic motherfucking hat. My, my beloved. Lord Cinder Bottom is a name I fear based on the scaly fandom alone, but God damn it, has he earned his name. The next shot you fire is a gigantic fireball. It is thicker, it is stronger, and it goes straight down. You're not bumping into anything. There's no bouncing of any kind. It is a dead set line. It is incredibly powerful, allows you to hit oranges from a very far distance away that you would have to rely a little bit on RNG for later on down the line. It is strong, it has a great utility, and it is a Pegger's Delight 
easy. Master Who gets bitches, and the Zen Ball is his fucking drip. Master Humongous Cock is in a league of his own. Bitches Zen ballin'. Who's on second? Nah, who's on first? Master Who fucking asked. If you aren't using a Pegger's Delight or Drip Master Who for the last five levels, you're handicapping yourself. And you know what? I respect that. What better way to experience Peggle than taking it a little harder? I actually love this game. <laughs> Genuinely, I actually do love this game. I don't play it often, but sometimes I'm just kind of bored. And I want to do like something a little bit light that doesn't require a whole lot of brain power or anything. And normally my two choices are COD Zombies, Destiny, or if I'm feeling really bored, I'll just jump on a Peggle. 15 years later, this bastard has got me grinning ear to ear. It's such a random and enjoyable game, and I don't know why it has the the power it does but it does and and luckily it's not just me who believes so <clears throat> observe keeps my girlfriend quiet best game ever great messages great role models i love pegging so much it's unreal my wife divorced me lol started drinking olive oil elden ring is made for fetuses compared to this game i left my wife for this game facts i threw a baby out my window to oncoming traffic because the ball didn't go in the free ball hole a game for true men haha ha, ball go dink 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 i eat a burger fucking life changing i love getting pegged amazing makes me horny this game has caused me irreversible psychological damage world war ii would have never happened if they just had peggle deluxe this game is racist So that's Peggle, the manliest game ever made. It's for sale on Steam, Xbox, and so on. It's a genuinely good time. It still is. Might kill a few hours if you're exceptionally bored, and honestly, that's worth it in its own right. Then you'll shelf it. A few years later, you forget your own it. You're like, oh my god, Peggle, that's right. And then you'll play it again. Also, Howie's Game Shack has been out of business for a very long time. I, I wouldn't say I'm crying any tears over that. I don't remember it being managed particularly well, and I don't remember the staff really liking working there. You know when you go to a GameStop and the person working there, it looks like they are not happy because they're working at a GameStop, and working at a GameStop means you are not happy? Yeah, it kind of is a vibe I got. You know, bucket list idea. One day, get rich enough, get my own cyber cafe. I have about five to ten soundproofed rooms with a bunch old Warhammer table you can rent out for the day or for a couple hours, something like that. Play some Warhammer with your friends. Terrain's there all for you to use. Tournaments going around the place, you know, stuff like that. That'd be a good time. I'd also give out the names of everyone who plays Hearts of Iron 4 at like in the PC cafe and then put you on a watch list because you deserve to be put on a watch list. Have you ever played tabletop RPG like D&D? And if so, what's the weirdest thing your group ever did? Absolutely. I 100% have played much D&D, and I cannot tell you what the weirdest thing my group ever did, because it is not something I can say on YouTube. However, currently I'm playing D&D, and I'm playing as an orc, and his name is Keith, based on an infamous green text. He's a, a practicing doctor, orc doctor, and he has a club named Sed, because it's the way he administers sedatives. As someone going to the junior in high school, what was the biggest shock you faced after you graduated? And any tips for others in that situation? I would say the biggest shock was that nothing mattered. High school fizzled away like that. No one cared. No one, no one talked about it. No, no one did anything. Half of your friends are going to go away, either to military or they're going to move away, or you're just not going to hang out with them as much. And it doesn't matter. No one gives a rat's ass if you are on varsity this, if your grades were that, or anything like that, except for when you're in high school. If you don't like it, then great, because you won't remember it much. And if you do like it, enjoy your time for the time being, because this is the only time it'll, it's going to matter. For the success of Adric, it's been fun seeing you do the night competition, other fan interactions. What's a community interaction event that you've wanted to do with the Bricky side of the community that you haven't gotten around to? That Left 4 Dead tournament? I want to hire a UI designer slash modder to give me a genuinely good competitive UI for the Left 4 Dead thing, because the current competitive UI for shoutcasting and just commentary in general, I think sucks. I think it's absolutely terrible, and I would love a genuinely good UI, but I don't really want to or have the... Well, I, mean, I guess I have, but I, I, don't, I don't want to spend the money to hire a full-time person to develop a UI for a Left 4 Dead tournament for that game, considering how old it is, and yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, maybe. We'll see. Anyway, thank you for watching. Come on. <laughs>